What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be taking a look at the VXC R1 Dragonfly. This is the Pro Max version. I've been getting several requests to look into this. So is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse for you? Let's check it out. And before we get started today, I did want to let you know that this was sent out to me by MetKeys, but everything you'll be hearing in this video is going to be my own words and my own opinions. Included inside the box, it does come with these grips, a user manual, and then a USB-C cable with the 1K receiver and the dongle adapter. There is four different versions of this mouse when you're looking to pick it up. The Pro has the Ice Berry Powder Dot switches in it comes with a 250 milliamp hour battery, is estimated to weigh around 48 grams. And that one does have the capability of using the 4K dongle to get either the 2K or the 4K polling rate. And though I do not currently have that one in hands, I do have the Pro Max version, which is the highest end model. Now there isn't a whole lot of difference between this version and the Pro version. It does use different switches in it. I believe the switches are called something like the Kahua white blades. And this version also does come with a 500 milliamp hour battery installed in it. It's supposed to weigh around 54 grams. We'll jump into that later on and I'll kind of go over my experiences with what these switches feel like, what they compare to, and we'll jump into all of that. For me personally, there also is on the Pro and the Pro Max, it does have a coating on it. And the other versions, the R1 SE and the R1 do not. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. But briefly, I just want to let you know that you can use your VGN 4K dongle if you already do have one, if you purchase one for the VGN Dragonfly or anything like that. So it's synced up perfectly in the software using VGN Hub. And again, we'll go on that later on in the video. But if you are looking to get the 2K or the 4K performance, you do need to purchase the 4K dongle separately. So let's get started on the R1 Pro Max over here at the bottom, real simple stuff. On and off switch over here, you do have your DPI button right here, a place to store the 1K receiver. It actually does have a cover, but I did take it off. And the skate design on here, as you can see, it looks incredibly similar to the Pulsar X2, X2 Mini. Well, basically all the Pulsar mice. I did actually try and match them up. And the Pulsar skates are a little bit smaller and the design is a little bit more different. You might be able to put on here and make it work, but I would recommend either picking up skates that are specific specifically just for this or using some type of a dot skate. And I actually did pick up a set of skates from X-Ray Pad. I do have those on the way for this. And in case you're wondering, the performance of these skates are just your typical cheaper option. They're a little bit of a harsher style of skate. So coming back over the top, I do want to tell you guys the overall build of this feels really good. When I was death gripping it in game, I'm not getting any like major bending or flex out of it. But just to be clear, this is a more thinner style plastic mouse. If I were to push really hard in the shell with two fingers, you do get some bend out of it. Again, you can get a little bit of bend with one hand, but nothing that I felt like was a major issue for me personally or hindered my gameplay. Even the switches mouse one and two, as you can see here, it's a little bit of this thinner style plastic. So I just want to give you guys realistic expectations, what to expect when you're getting this. Again, nothing that's bad, but again, it does feel just a little bit on the thinner side. But this does come with a coating on the surface and it is kind of like a lighter matte style coating. You don't really feel a whole lot of a texture there. And I do want to say that I mostly have drier hands and I didn't feel like this coating was the best for drier style hands. It did feel just a little bit more slippery to me at first, but as I started gaming with this more and my hands started you know kind of heat up or whatever i did test out getting my hands wet and if your hands are wetter this coating is a lot more grippy but overall i would say i really do like this coating a lot uh, i talk about the cheaper mice a lot and one of the things i always bring up is that none of them usually have a coating on there so the fact that they are moving in the right direction i give that two thumbs up and even though this isn't probably my favorite coating out there i would say that it's really good and i do enjoy it and when it comes to mouse one and two again it's using these white blade switches and and honestly, even though these switches, again, they just feel like a thinner plastic, they honestly feel really good. So when I grip the mouse, it's holding it like this. And as you're compressing the switch there, as you can see, the there's a, just a little bit of pre-travel, nothing too bad. So you don't really get that horrible of pre or post-travel. The buttons on here, as I was using them in game, honestly felt great. Now, if you were to move up more, you're going to get, obviously, a lot more bend on the switch. And it can bend over and make contact there with the actual base itself but the overall implementation from front to back it does get a little bit heavier towards the rear but there's not a whole lot of side to side play there 
or any type of major teetering. So again, even though they're really thin there, again, just the way that I use them in game, they honestly felt really good. And one thing I did forget to mention to you guys, I'll bring up really quick is the sensor placement on this. It's just a little bit lower, nothing that's too big of a deal or that I noticed too much, but it does slightly sit just right below the middle of the mouse there. I was really curious to see how these switches are and how they perform, and I can honestly say that I really like them. I kind of feel like they're just a little bit more clicky than the Huano Blue Shell Pink Dots, but they're not as clicky as something like the TTC Golds. So let me just throw these up to my mic here really quick. Let me first drop the Huano Blue Shell Pink Dots. Now I'll go ahead and drop these White Blades. And then we'll just go ahead and throw up the TTC Golds as well. I enjoy them a lot and I had no problem with spamming these switches or anything like that in game. The scroll also feels really good. This is using the TTC Silver Encoder. So typical stuff that I'm used to. It has pretty defined steps, easy to click on the center. One thing I do wanna mention about the scroll, however, is on my unit, it is a little bit loose on the side to side play there. And if I were to shake the mouse side to side, you do get a little bit of rattling there, but nothing that I noticed too much when I was in game. I just wanted to bring that up. That's something that I didn't notice there. And when it comes to the side buttons, I do get a little bit of play if I were to push in the back here. So there is just a little bit of pre-travel, but the clicks, honestly, they feel really good. They feel really snappy and lightweight. If you're to push really hard into the shell, you can get a little bit extra of post-travel there. So not the absolute best side buttons ever, but again, as I was using these, they honestly felt pretty good and they didn't seem that bad to me. And I also forgot to mention that uh, as you're going back and forth on them, you don't get any type of teetering or rocking out of them either. So as I pulled this out of the box, I kind of had higher expectations for it. And as I first put it in my hands, I'm like, ah, oh, it feels all right. But to be completely honest with you guys, when I started playing with this and gaming with it, it really started to lighten up for me. It really feels good. And honestly, I really like everything about it. I don't really have too many complaints, especially coming in at the price that it comes in. So let's go ahead and drop a click and quality sound check. All right, so now to talk about the weight and balance. And honestly, for me, this is one thing that is really incredible about this mouse, aside from the fact that I love the shape, the feeling of the switches, everything about it, the coating, it feels really good. Um, the one thing that's really impressive is the fact that this has such a low weight. And obviously this Pro Max version comes with a 500 milliamp hour battery in it. For those of you that watch the channel know that I like to mod my mice. The 500 milliamp hour battery, which I have right here, I no longer have it in the mouse, weighs about 10 grams. So what I did is I started using this and I enjoyed it so much. I'm like, let's go ahead and throw a different battery in here and see what I can do. So with the skates off, with the screws out, it does have screws, two screws at the top, two screws at the bottom. I threw a 150 milliamp hour battery in here and it dropped the weight down to 42 grams. So I was like, wow, that's really impressive. Put the screws back in here and even putting these bigger style skates on here, again, 150 milliamp hour battery, 46 0.4 grams. And I'm not going to show you the weight and balance since I modded it. Obviously, it has perfect weight and balance, but out of the box with the 500 milliamp hour battery in it, it did have great front to back and even in the left to right felt perfect to me. And when it comes to the software and performance, VGN Hub has updated and it now has English. I honestly love the layout a lot more. It was way more simple for me to use. Just come over here to the settings tab and you have the option here is where you can go ahead and pair the 4K dongle. And it has all the typical stuff that you would hope for allows you to adjust your dpi set your polling rate it even allows you to drop the debounce setting on the clicks so these are the settings that i use for this mouse that seem to work perfectly for me and the 4k performance of this has been working great for me in my gameplay okay so now let's go ahead and jump into one of the most important parts which is the shape and when it comes to the shape 
out of all of the things out there, I really do feel like this is the closest, in my opinion, to the X2. Now, it is a little bit smaller in size, but I don't really feel like it would be completely fair to say that it falls in between the X2 and the X2 Mini because it's not an exact clone, even though it's incredibly similar. If you have used the X2 or the X2 Mini, then honestly, this feels pretty similar overall to the X2 with just some minor differences and adjustments to it. Coming over to the bottom, as you can see, it does have a pretty flat profile. There is a little bit more of curvature there, but it's nothing too extreme or anything like that. Coming over here, you can see it does have this rear hump profile and it is raised up quite a bit up there in the front. So it gives you a lot of real estate for various types of grips, whether you prefer to grip more in the front of the mouse, in the middle. I really do feel like this mouse all around has a really great height. And then the rear hump there, a little bit aggressive. It is pretty rounded there at the top. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into the comparisons. And let's start out with the Pulsar X2 since, like I said, these are really similar to the feeling of one another in my opinion. Coming over here at the bottom, as you can see, the X2 is definitely much wider. It feels a little bit more flat, but if you put these together, the X2 does feel a lot more wide towards the middle and towards the front. As you can see the curve profile from the top to the sides, they feel really similar to one another in hands. It really does feel closer to the original X2. So next up, let's go ahead and throw it up against the X2 Mini so I can show you what I'm talking about. On the X2 Mini, I feel like it's where you can kind of see that the sides on the X2 and X2 Mini feel a little bit more flat. But when you put the Mini together with this, I do kind of feel like up here in the front that the Mini feels just slightly a little bit more wide. But aside from that, the Mini feels much smaller and lower in profile. As you can see there, the hump does sit up quite a bit higher. And here's a look on the profile on the sides of both of these so you can see what they look like. All right, and finally, let's go ahead and compare it against the Ninjutsu Sora 4K. Now, the overall scale of these two is incredibly similar to one another. They are very close when it comes to the overall width. As you can see, the Ninjutsu Sora, the differences are that it is a little bit more narrow down here in the middle and the front of the mouse. But the Ninjutsu Sora feels wider in the rear. But as you can see, the scale of both of these stacking them together there, they are both definitely medium style mice. And when it comes to the rear of both of these, as you can see, like I was saying, the Ninjutsu Sora, it does have a little bit different of a hump profile there and feel a little bit more wide in the back where the R1 is very similar to the hump profile of the X2 and it does taper off more aggressively from the top middle down to the sides. And here's a shot of both of them from the sides. So if you are a fan of the overall scale of the Ninjutsu Sora, you have a pretty good idea of what you'll be getting here with the R1 Dragonfly. All right guys, so that about wraps things up on the VX2 
XC R1 Dragonfly Pro Max. Even though this mouse doesn't feel as solid or bulletproof as the Pulsar X2, I must say that using this in game, the shape, the overall feeling of it, just in general, I really think that they killed it with this thing. And even though the shape didn't seem too far away from the Pulsar X2, I really do feel like the adjustments or the changes that they made seem to work out perfectly for my hand size, the way that I gripped and used the mouse. And I would absolutely say that I could recommend checking this out, especially coming in at the price that it does come in at. And coming in the very soon future, I'm going to be dropping my budget tier list for the year 2023. This mouse will be included on there, so go ahead and look forward to watching that if you want to know where I'm going to rank this amongst all the other budget options out there. But aside from that, if you've enjoyed watching this video, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.